In this step, we are going to see how to add filtering functionality to the list of customers we created in the previous step. So the basic idea is to add a text field over here where users can type something and then the grid is going to show uh, the customers that match that filter string. So let's go ahead and create a new text field here. Let's call this uh, filter text. And let's use filter by name as a caption. And I'm going to use this line of code to add the text field. So I need to change this to add components and then I can add the filter text component. Right. So we need to add some um, kind of listener to this uh, filter text component. So usually you will add a value uh, change listener. Uh, but the problem with this one here is that uh, the change event is going to be fired when the text field loses the focus. So it would be better if the uh, the, the event is fired when the uh, user stops typing, for example. And there is a listener for that, which is called text change listener. So I'm going to use the add text change listener and I can specify a lambda expression here. Mm, and what we need to do here is uh, to update the grid. So one way of doing it is by setting a new uh, container data source that, well, uh, contains uh, only the customers that match the filter. So let's create a new, uh, uh, yes, bin item container of customer. And we need to specify the collection. So we need to get um, the customers from the service class. And there is a method that accepts a string filter. So finally, we need this uh, string filter, which is uh, what the, the user uh, typed inside this text field. But you cannot use just the get value method from this one. It won't work because we're adding a text change listener. So you have to use this variable here instead, the event. So you can get the text from there. So just remember to, to do that. And I'm going to break this line here. Yes. Mm. All right. So let's try the application now. And yes, the text field is there. And if I start typing something and I stop, then the, the, the event is fired and uh, the customers uh, are filtered. All right, so that was very easy. So let, uh, let's add some more functionality to this application. So usually with this kind of filtering uh, functionality, you have also a button to uh, clear the filter so that you can see all the customers again. So let's add a button for that. We can do it right here. So button uh, clear filter text button equals new button. And let's use clear filter as a caption. And uh, let's also add the, the button just uh, after the filter uh, text uh, text field, right? So when when the button is clicked, we need to do uh, basically two things. So we need to uh, set the value of this uh, text field to something like uh, empty string, but there is a shortcut for that. So we can call instead the clear uh, method so that's that's uh, easier and we also need to update uh, the grid so that, that, that it shows all the all the the customers right so that's what the update list method does and 
you could have also refactored this method so that it receives the filter string and then you can use it here and then you could also call this the method from here but I want to keep this in sync with the written version of this tutorial so that you can switch to it whenever you want so I'm just going to uh, keep this method functional so that it uh, uses the value in the sorry in the filter uh, text field so we need to get the value from there get value this is just in case the update filter method is called from outside and that's something that's going to happen the next step all right so let's see if the uh yeah let's restart the server let's see if the if the clear button works all right so let's use some text here and then clear filter and yes it's working now right so it's time to improve the ux of this application a little bit so the first thing i would like to change is to put this this caption inside the text field so that we can save some some space that's very easy to do what we have to do is uh, get rid of the caption that we are setting in the constructor here and then we can use a set input prompt method to set that string that's going to be inside the text field. So let's use filter by name like that. And let's try the application. Let's see. Yeah. So now you have the text inside the, the, the text field. And if I click, it disappears and allows me to uh, type something. And if it is empty, well, it will show the, the input prompt. Good. Uh, another thing we can do is to uh, get rid of this caption also and use an icon instead. So usually you you have like an X uh, icon that most users will recognize as a, as a clear or delete thing. So that's very easy to do also. First, let's get rid of the caption. And if you have a look at, at the uh, uh, constructors, there is one that accepts an icon and well uh, with Vadin you can use the font awesome class with a lot of icons that you can set uh, that you can show in your UIs so particularly this X uh, icon I'm looking for is called times and that should be it so let's try the application and yes it works and uh, another thing I would like to change is uh, the uh, location of this button. Uh, right now, you don't know if this X is, for example, to delete some customers or, or, or something else. So it makes sense to, to place this button just next to, to the filter text field. So we, we'll, we, we would need some kind of horizontal layout to in order to do that and well guess what there is a horizontal layout that you can use so I'm going to go call this filtering and sorry filtering the add components this one let's add first the filter text component of course and then the clear button and well we don't want to add those here but we want to add the filtering layout and then the grid so let's see how it looks like right uh, now we have the components uh, aligned here horizontally but there is just this small detail here it it clearly looks like two components uh, placed together so you can see this uh, shared border. It would be nicer if, if it is actually a shared border. So it's only one border that they have. So it looks more compact. That's also very easy to do. Uh, but you will need to change this. So instead, 
uh, of a horizontal layout, you need to use a CSS layout, which is a lightweight layout that you can style using CSS. And the particular uh, style we're looking for is available in the value team. So you can set a style name from the value theme, which is called layout component group. And that's all you need to do uh, to improve the appearance of these two components here. So as you can see, now they uh, actually share the border and they look more compact.